Welcome to the first episode of RV and Afraid. And right now, family is saying, oh, good Lord, they've lost their minds. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sandy. And I'm Ed. And this is General, the totally awesome water dog. We hope you'll join us on our journey of discovery. The, the next, next adventure, adventure is just, just over, over the, the hills. hills. Today, we are visiting the house in the horseshoe, also called the Alston House. So this house was built by Philip Alston, and it was built in 1771. 1771 was an amazing time in the Carolinas. I mean, this was actually frontier land back then. And uh, this was really one of the first big homes built in North Carolina. There was a battle here. This is the site of a battle. And when I say the site of a battle, I'm not talking about a battle 300 yards out in the field. This house was attacked. Uh, Colonel Philip uh, also had his troops. He was, uh, he was a patriot. And uh, the Tories, led by uh, David Fanning, Colonel David Fanning, an infamous dude, uh, surrounded this place when uh, Alston was here with his troops. And uh, you can still see all these awesome holes from the musket balls that went through here. And it's all over this home. You can see it in the back, too. And at one point during the battle, they took a farm wagon, loaded it with hay, and rolled it up to the house, trying to burn the house down too. Well, eventually what happened was uh, Colonel Philip Austin surrendered, and uh, his wife did the negotiations on the settlement. What did she do? Tell him, Philip, stop shooting. I'm going to go talk to David, and we're going to put an end to this thing. I don't know how it went down, but... But this is an awesome piece of history, and thank goodness, sites uh, like this are preserved for all of us to come and see, and free to, for all of us Americans to come and see something awesome like this. house we ran across this little town of Goldston North Carolina and don't know too much about Goldston 
but there were a couple buildings that looked really interesting to us, really old. And uh, then when we turned on to another street, we saw on the side of one building that had a billboard about Charlie Daniels and that he had graduated from Goldston High School in the class of 1955. So pretty awesome stuff. And then uh, further down the road a little ways, we ran into an Esso station and general store that had been built in 1883. So just some more of America's back road treasures. You gotta love it. So we spent about two weeks at um, Jordan Lake State Park near Raleigh. And one of the main reasons that we did that was because our granddaughter lives there. And uh, we were able to spend quite a bit of time with her, which was totally awesome. It was great. And uh, it gave us a chance to uh, learn about trailer life living and iron out a couple of the bugs. Uh, which, uh, just to touch on that, you know, before we left, uh, I was trying anything and everything I could do to iron out all the bugs, uh, wherever I thought that may be. But ultimately, you just reach a point where you got to twist the key and go. And, and we did. And uh, we had one uh, sticking gate valve, and uh, I, I knew I had a problem. Uh, but we, we addressed it on the road, used the Amazon locker, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, that's a great system. It's, it's really great. And got the gate valve and uh, got everything fixed. Um, we, we had the tools. So um, I guess the lesson there is uh, sooner or later, you just got to twist the key and go. You may not make the rig 100% correct. You just got to go. Right. There's always going to be problems coming up along the way that'll have to be addressed so we just have to you know prepare for that that's gonna happen there's nothing we can do about it twist the key and go yep <laughs> <laughs> here is another back road attraction right on the side of the road this is called Shangri-La Village a gentleman named Henry Warren um, was a tobacco farmer in this area and when he retired, he started mining this quartz rock on his own property. This is so cool. And started building this village in his spare time. And he worked on this for about nine years before he died. <laughs> it's a little fireplace in there. Oh, some of it's fallen over but still way awesome. It's got some seating areas and steps to get down into it. Gotta have a water tower, right? Highly recommended. Um, this is off of North Carolina Route 86, north of Henry Warren Road. We've moved to Lake Reedsville Park and Campground in Reedsville, North Carolina. This is maybe about 20 miles north of Greensboro, North Carolina. And there's our site. 
Here's a little bit of the rest of the campground. These lots below us, in between us and the lake, um, this is kind of on a hill, in between us and the lake here, these don't have sewer hookups. So they're the last ones to get used. So it's a little empty right at the moment. Very pretty. Spaces aren't very close together. It's light and airy. Very nice. This here's Chandler. Hi, bud. Chandler the water dog. You show him water, he's in it. It's the ocean, he's in it. The sound, no problem. Mud puddle, love it. Any kind of water, doesn't matter. And you can see why. Look at the paddles he's got for feet. <laughs> huh, bud? Got anything to say for the people out there? Give us a woof. Give a big woof for the folks out there, bud. Give us a woof. No woof? No. Okay, today we are visiting the Tannenbaum Historic Site. Um, which is the Hoskins Farmstead um, and there was a Revolutionary War fought on this property. It's called the Guilford Courthouse Battle and I'm getting pulled by General. <laughs> so this is the Hoskins Farmstead area. We're going to go up and get a closer look. So the buildings are all locked up, so we're not allowed to go in there. But they still look pretty cool from the outside. Look at that chimney. And here's the kitchen building with another awesome chimney. So while we were in the Lake Reedsville area, um, we visited Guilford courthouse national military park it's a long name sorry i stuttered there <laughs> and um uh when we were visiting the gift shop we found these passport books that we didn't even know existed and they come in all sizes and of course we just got the the, the smallest one but cheap cheap yeah <laughs> i wasn't gonna say that but <laughs> but um this is a pretty cool it, it well, is, and, and basically when you visit the state parks, each one you visit, assuming they participate, you, you get a stamp. So it's like, uh, you, you know, you're getting your passport stamped to the different parks, and you collect them along the way. Um, I think it was, we really found it in the children's section, but we're kids, so, you know, it, it works <laughs> good for us. You know? yeah. Just another souvenir for your journey. We have that child mentality. Yeah. <laughs> Good job! Awesome! Good job! Way to go! We are in Pilot Mountain State Park climbing to the top of the mountain it's called Summit Overlook Two-mile road to the top. A lot of switchbacks. Steep hills. Big drop-offs. All that fun stuff. But a very pretty drive. Nice trees. Well, if you wanted to start collecting rocks, there's some here. <laughs> well, this is state park, so... We can't take the rocks. Probably I have a Lucy can. Summit Overlook now on Pilot Mountain and we're actually in the clouds. We're up so high. There's a little bit of a view from up here. Amazing. It's a little overcast today. We were hoping for clearer skies, but still pretty awesome. So here's one view of the mountain. Here's the last little bit of the trail. 
going up to the mountain. So I wasn't able to go up to the top of the trail. Um, I just chickened out, but Ed did go. Yeah, it was a piece of cake. <laughs> I heard angels. I mean, <laughs> that's high up. <gasps> but he got some good pictures, so you can take a look at these. So the visitor center at Hanging Rock has this huge balcony on the back end of it. Um, so we can get a little bit of the view from up here. Look at them Blue Ridge Mountains. Now we're gonna go try and find a waterfall. So this is Upper Cascade Falls. Beautiful. Unfortunately, um, we're a little early. The sun's in the wrong spot, so it's kind of all shaded. Very pretty though. Ed went down here to get a closer shot. <laughs> Their steps look really slippery though. We're having this butterfly bloom here. I don't know if you can see this or not. This is so awesome. They're just little bluish purple butterflies. They're all over the place. So this is Hidden Falls. Um, we're on the wrong side of the sun right at the moment. Again, the falls are in the shade and the sun's going right at the camera. So this isn't going to look the greatest. But this is Hidden Falls. And it said on the brochure that this is 0.4 miles, an easy hike. Um, I beg to differ. <laughs> that was not an easy hike at all. So their version of easy and my version of easy are two different things, but it's all good. Waterfalls are always worth it. General's playing in the fresh water here, fresh waterfall water. He loves getting his feet wet. There we go. Beautiful waterfall. But Ed and I went all the way down to the falls and spent quite a bit of time there and we were by ourselves. And on the way back, we passed five other parties of people going down to the falls. So that was pretty awesome. We got it all to ourselves for a few minutes. So very much blessed. So I think one of the things we're really starting to enjoy about RV life is the different people that we meet. And uh, we met a lady named Linda. She's off to Walmart. And she pulled in last night, got out of her vehicle and looked over at us and said, okay, there's a story. And uh, so instantly talking and she bought that last night. And, and within an hour was here. She's going to use it to go from where we're at, at um, around Mount, Mount Pilot and go uh, all the way up into Boston. Um, so just checked on her this morning, see how things are going. She had a little bit of trouble with uh, her setup here and uh, it slipped on her. We wound up having to jack her up and, and help her out. And you know what, some good came out of it because I've never had that jack out of the truck. And between Sandy and I, we were able to figure out how to do it. Um, we won't talk about putting it away. <laughs>